Hi, I'm Coy Jondro here at Golden Apple Comics, and I am here with Jackson A. Dunn. Yes, Brightburn himself. I feel like we're looking at a thesaurus for Superman. Yeah, that's something that I was just really gravitated towards. I feel like a kid in a comic book store. Brightburn is available on Blu-ray, DVD, and digital right now. So we're going to talk all about Brightburn and buy some comics. Of course. You ready to buy some comics? Oh, I'm ready. This is Comic Book Shopping. All right, so the world of comic books is vast and decades running. How much did you know comics growing up? Were you a comic book kid? I was really more of like a movie, video game oriented, like always dressing up as Superman and Spider-Man, indulging on the culture, but never really getting to dive into the whole world of comics as itself. What was the first movie you remember? Like what was the, the, the first taste? It was definitely something Superman. Probably yeah. probably one of the you know many cartoon series on Cartoon Network or something like that that I saw. So what drew you to Superman? You said a lot as a kid. You like to dress like him. You like those worlds. You like yeah. those movies. What what about the character calls to you? I love the Man of Steel Superman. Uh, the darker portrayal and and just the way that that movie was made and the way that he's played in the movie. The scene that I remember the most probably is like the iconic him saving the school bus and and, and just not trying to take any recognition for it. Yeah, and that, that's something that I was just really gravitated towards. One of my favorite parts of Brightburn is there's the, the cover of the first appearance of Superman where he's holding up the car and it's that iconic moment. Yeah. And then you have a dark take on that where <laughs> you use it for murder. Yeah. And I, and I, I like that, that, that twist on the mythology. What character in all of comic books would you turn evil if you had the power? Oof. I think an evil war machine would be really cool to see. Yeah, that'd be yeah. fun. I like that. That's a, that's a deeper cut. Now, one villain you'd turn into a hero. I would like to see Doctor Doom as a hero. Yeah? See where, you know, he could have taken that hate that he got and kind of like the disgrace that he got and taken that into maybe becoming someone better. Yeah. Now, we're talking about villains turned heroes. There's a run called Curse of the White Knight, which is a sequel to Batman the White Knight. The Joker becomes sane and then basically becomes a congressman, mayor, a, a political figure in Gotham and does a better job cleaning up Gotham than Batman has. And it drives Batman crazy because the Joker is basically doing what he always wanted to do. And it's written and drawn by the same guy. This guy, Sean Murphy, did all of this. And the sequel just started coming out. So this was a couple years ago and then this is currently running. So these, I think you dig and they tie beautifully into it. And then you're talking about Superman. This is Tom King Superman, which is, to me, the thing I like about Superman is he shouldn't be approachable, but he somehow is. And this run really makes you see what Superman's perspective is, and he, he feels human, he feels down to earth. Oh yeah, so it looks really nice. that one to you as well, and then I got a couple more for you. Mr. Loki here. Mm -hmm. A lot of questions. It's written by Kibble Smith. He's a comedy writer, so he adds a, a flavor of humor into Loki, which is so important to keep the character working. I can't think of a character that's more like, is he a hero, is he a villain, than Loki at all times. So these are Marvels, and now these are selling out everywhere. So this is actually issue two, four, and epilogue. The tricky thing about comics is collecting them means hunting them down. <laughs> so one and three are not here because they sold out. You uh, know comics through movies and video games and stuff. What's cool about these is they retell a lot of the classic 60s and 70s stories, but with brand new art. I and love brand how new... that looks. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. So like this frame would have been in a comic from another angle, and then he decided to be like, what's it like from down here? So it's a retelling of the story from our perspective, from the ground level. Some heavy stuff. Some heavy. Li some physically. Mental like, gains. I'm feels struggling it. to hold this. This man is prepared. All right, so this is only the beginning. You ready for more? Oh, I'm ready. We're gonna dive in. Let's do this. So we decided to have Brightburn himself decide who his cabal of villainy was and you guys all turned in amazing stuff. We had a hashtag, we had an email, and the winner of this gets a bunch of sweet, sweet swag. What was the process? Like, how did, how did you pick these? Man? Yeah, so we got a bunch of submissions and I narrowed it down to my four favorite. It was difficult and uh, I just loved each of these individually. If I was to have to pick a favorite, I would say probably this one, visually. It's that so striking and I, I love yeah. the symmetry in it and I like that it looks like, it almost looks like a card you could have. Like a Yu-Gi-Oh, like you summon this person and they go off. Yeah, it gave me a lot of Scarlet Witch vibes. So this is all incredible uh, Brightburn fans. You are artistic geniuses, excellent work. So that's that's the winner? That is the winner, yeah. Okay, now not to leave these behind, but more comics. I mean, this just weren't a comic store, man, I got it.
What was it like being on set and having powers? Like, how did you mentally prepare to be like, and I can fly? Well, it feels a little different playing Brightburn than it would maybe playing like Spider-Man or Superman because it's not inherently like, I have superpowers. It's more of like a demonic kind of tone. So it's a little different, but at the same time, like being in a harness and being zipped across a room on a track, you know, it's, it's pretty unreal. Well, is there anything with your backstory that you gave the character we didn't see on screen? That I've really tried to adapt like as deeply as I could his kind of life at school. He's not like Superman. He's not always been likable and he's been closest with his parents. They're really the only humans he has a connection to. So I wanted to live in the world of, of reinterpretations of Superman, and this is one of my favorites. This is Mark Millar and Lionel Yu. It's a story that feels familiar until suddenly it doesn't. This kid wants powers. He's a kid that's picked on, he's, he's on his own, and then all of a sudden you realize he got his powers from a demonic monkey. That's oh, right, wow. demon monkeys. Anything with a demon monkey and a Superman character. This is Injustice, Gods Among Us is a great game. This is the comic book foundation of that whole world. And this ended up running for a few years. This is the entire first year. The Joker gets bored, always losing to Batman. Right. So he goes after Superman, mild spoilers for issue one, he convinces Superman that Lois is doomsday. He then flies into space and Superman himself kills Lois Lane, right. which makes Superman go mad. He turns into an evil dictator that runs the world with an iron fist. It does things no mainstream comic could do by being in Elseworld. That so, is insanity. Invincible. This is one of the longest running comics with a similar batch of creators. You meet this kid and it's a very Spider-Man flavored book. His dad's been a Superman type the whole time. And you realize that in this case, the other planet wasn't a peaceful planet. It was a war planet. And it's a giant twist on what if Superman had been pretending to be this nice guy from Kansas all along. I love that art style. It looked almost like a little anime at some points and then it was, it was very variable. Are you ready for more? I'm ready for more. To comics! To comics! You were recently in another property that I love very dearly. What was it like being young Scott Lang in Endgame? I didn't really know what movie I was in when I was filming it. It was amazing being on set and seeing everything and Paul Rudd showing me the Quinjet and, and all the sets was <laughs> yeah. incredible. It's super secretive. They got posters everywhere that say like loose lips, sink ships, stuff like that. It's awesome. What's something if Brightburn 2 was announced today, you'd be like, this is the thing I want? Um, I mean, I'd love to see a team like a whole, like the, the fan art, cabal, cabal of villainy, villainy. <laughs> so to speak. So this is Uncanny X-Force. Now I know you're a Deadpool guy and you wanna know more about Deadpool. This is one of the best runs of Deadpool ever. Basically the X-Men have to be goody two-shoes. X-Force is doing all the missions they can't do. Deadpool's the beating heart of the comedy in the book. At one point in this book, Archangel's so hurt and needs to be revitalized and Deadpool cuts off parts of himself to feed him. Cause generate. he can grow back. So he's healing Archangel by slicing off parts of himself to get him. It goes there. And then this is Brian Pesane and Gary Duggan. I've seen a lot of Deadpool goes to the zoo. Deadpool, basically the presidents of the United States, right. have all been resurrected. Uh -huh. Of course. And Deadpool's got to kill them all because yeah. they're zombies. Yeah, right. Of so, course. so this book surprised me because it actually taught me a lot about the American presidents. It's Educational. Really, yeah, I feel like this is a good way to learn about your, yeah. your government system. So yeah. that is a whole bunch of Deadpool for you, sir. And uh, add it onto the boom, stack. Boom. Let's get some more. Woo. Now, these are the newest books. Every Wednesday, new comic books come out. So for me, Friday is movies, Wednesday is comic books, the rest of the days, they count. So this is gonna be a book with the Thing fighting the Hulk, and you find out why inside. I think you'll dig it, and that'll lead you into the world of doom as we go along. At this friendly neighborhood Spider-Man right here, that's looking interesting, what's with the pink? You know how Spider-Man's either like an Avenger globetrotting the world? Right. But the heart of Spider-Man is being a neighbor. Mm -hmm. So this is him in the smallest possible container. You meet his neighbors, it's all smaller contained adventures. The art is so vibrant. This is one of my favorite Spider-Man runs of all time, so this is actually a great pick. I've always loved the concept of Spider-Man being just a kid who dresses up and uses his little spider powers to go around and help everyone. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's just a comforting concept. This we got all of this. The stuff. Immortal Hulk here, huh? So Immortal Hulk is actually a horror comics. This beautifully ties right. into your world of horror Superman. Right. Banner wants to die, but every time he tries to kill himself, the other guy spits out the bullet. It is intense, terrifying. It is the Hulk in a way that we haven't had him since the 60s. All right, one final Final book. This is Cosmic Ghost Rider Destroys Marvel History. It's an issue six, so a lot of people are gonna get mad at me for jumping you off at six, but I think finding one through five is part of the journey. 
Cosmic Ghost Rider is Frank Castle in the future where he is not only the Punisher, but also the Ghost Rider, but also has the powers cosmic. And he wants to go save his family, but in doing so, goes back in time and accidentally messes with all sorts of giant moments in Marvel history. Do you feel like you got enough? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think so. I think, I think it'll last a couple days. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all right, yeah. let's check you out. So as an actor, is there any difference for you working on an intense comedy like Shameless versus an intense horror movie like Brightburn? Is there a different like method to your madness? Um, I mean, yeah, it's definitely a different tone on set. Not that everyone on, a, on the set of a horror movie is like scary and <laughs> jumping out from every corner, but... Elizabeth Banks is always red. Yeah, she's always <laughs> doing a jump scare on me to keep me ah, ready. You know? I'm dying to know the story behind this. <laughs> so. That's Lion Cat. Lion Cat. No joke. So this is from Saga, uh, one of my favorite comics of all time. And Lion Cat is a creature that only says the word lying and only right. when you're lying. So he basically <laughs> appears as like a barometer of lying. All right, we good? Checking it all out? I think so. It's 274.38. All right, here we go. For you. Thank you very much. Enjoy all that reading. I'll try. All right. So how good does that new Joker look, man? Oh, amazing. This has been another exciting episode of Comic Book Shopping, a very special episode because right now you can buy Brightburn on Blu-ray, DVD, and digital as you read all of these comics. How you feeling, man? Strained, physically. <laughs> yeah. uh, drained, emotionally. <laughs> That happens when you're yeah. in a comic store with me. It's a, it's a whole thing. I apologize. Now, we also got tons of great fan art. Yeah, we did. Uh, it was really hard to narrow it down, but pick some, some beautiful pieces of art, some comic-worthy art, in my opinion. Totally um, agree. And congratulations to the winner. Yeah, I'm so excited for you. Uh, congratulations to the winner. Prepare for swag, and you, dear viewer, prepare for Brightburn, because it is absolutely insane. In the meantime, I would like to thank Jackson A. Dunn for joining me. Thank you, man. I appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me. I'd like to thank Golden Apple Comics, and as always, I would like to thank comic books for existing. Till next time, stay sweaty.